Thank you. I won't say I'm not a big expert, but I have been down to the Rio Grande Valley about five or six times over the years. Um, and so welcome to uh, Birding the Rio Grande Valley. And um, to keep it a little shorter, and um, I'll be basically talking about basically in April. It's about the only month I've ever been down there. Um, most of these pictures are mine, especially the bad ones. But I did put in a few really nice pictures that I didn't have bird pictures of. And hopefully I'll remember to point those out. So where is the Rio Grande Valley? Well, it's basically the bottom, very bottom southern part of uh, Texas. Uh, generally, the uh, Rio Grande Valley uh, goes from like uh, San, San Ignacio or uh, Zapata all the way down to the coast to South Padre Island with across uh, right along the Rio Grande uh, River, separating the USA and Mexico. Um, and these are just some of the places that I've birded. Uh, there are many places to bird, but uh, due to time and whatnot, I'm basically just gonna talk about uh, four places. Uh, and mainly um, because what's great about birding the Rio Grande Valley is it's really easy to do, whether you're going alone with a few people or even with a group, um, you can get nearly all the specialties by simply going to the National Wildlife Refuges and the state parks. So it's very easy. You don't need to know a lot about where to really go. You basically go to each of the centers, pick up a trail map and head out. It's really that easy. So basically, um, when you do travel down there, uh, usually by air, um, you want to fly into McAllen. Um, small airport, but large airplanes do come in there. It's, I guess it's an international um, <laughs> airport, but there's no direct flights. So most likely you'll be going through either Dallas or Houston. Uh, I will say that um, we did a small last trip this last April, and um, it is that trip, New York to either, either place in uh, Texas and then down to McAllen is noted for losing luggage. Just to let you know, um, try to have, if you do um, make a thing, make sure you have uh, plenty of time between the two flights. Again, airlines can change that and make it shorter. Um, uh, <clears throat> I have lost my luggage once and fortunately showed up the next night around midnight. <laughs> Um, this time we did uh, carry on only, um, but go into McAllen, a uh, number of places to stay. One place I would recommend is the um, <clears throat> Holiday Inn Express and Suites in Wesleyco. Um, so kind of in between these four major spots and as well as other, other great burning spots. And what I like about it, it is literally just up the street from Estero Lano Grande State Park. Um, and that's important because that state park, you can go in in the evening uh, to about 10 p.m. and can get some nice, great night, night birding and then got a very easy drive back to uh, your hotel. It's a um, business hotel, so they, they give you a really good uh, free breakfast in the morning. Um, and there's a very good restaurant called the Blue Onion that is uh, walkable uh, from there. I will say... Uh, and um, some of the people have joined uh, from Hudson River Audubon trips down there. Uh, finding, I always like to get local places to eat. Finding local, good local places to eat has been a challenge down here. Uh, I can talk about that a little later on. But um, we're going to talk about mainly the um, Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park and nearby National Butterfly Center, Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge, Estelle Lana Grande and South Padre Island. First off, we'll go to the National Wildlife Refuge. Very easy to get to, great uh, visitor center. Uh, first things you might know, might notice, oh, so, so we go to the, this is basically uh, where, you, where you bird. Um, again, very easy to follow maps. Uh, you got, you got two, two main uh, lake series, uh, the Willow Lakes and the Pintail Lakes. Um, Pintel lakes are kind of bit out in the open, so um, if you're if it's going to be a hot day, you may want to do those first. Although it's really hard not to go to Willow Lakes first. So probably the first bird you might notice, great kiskadee is a, one of the specialties down there. Um, 
uh, quite common. And uh, the lines, the, the telephone lines in and out of the refuge <clears throat> and along the, uh, high, the roadway uh, will frequently hold scissor tail flycatch. You may not see them going in, but you'll definitely see them coming out. They seem to start perching a little later in the day. And again, this place has, uh, just to go back, the uh, Rio Grande Valley ha has over 500 species seen. And there are a lot of birds that can only be seen here. A lot of these Mexican birds just come across the border. Um, um, and you can pick up a lot of lifers. Um, one of my favorites, golden fronted woodpecker. It looks a lot like our red bellied woodpecker, except that has that nice golden um, um, uh, spot in front of its eye. And uh, tons and tons of great tailed grackles. They have been expanding, as we've heard some, some other talks, uh, all over the, the western US. They have a lot of uh, nice um, observation areas. Um, this one overlooks Willow Lake, and the lake, um, again, will have ducks. Uh, they're just about to depart in April, but um, some of the ones you want to look for is black bellied whistling duck, frivolous whistling ducks, and uh, cinnamon teal. Uh, they all should be found. Uh, if you go late, late in April, they, they really start to disappear. Uh, the other thing, uh, it's funny because there's a lot of great specialties in the Rio Grande Valley. But just as we go through these pictures, just notice how many of these have shown up in the tri-state area in the last two, three years. Of course, <clears throat> fulvous whistling ducks, black belly ducks have come in here. And of course, one, one, when you go down there, you want to see a neotropic cormorant. If you didn't get it on the Hudson like I have. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're basically the default cormorant. There are some uh, double crests down there. Um, and then on grebes, uh, least, you can find least grebes. Um, they're kind of strange looking. Uh, plenty of pie bill grebes um, and a couple of the other grebes. Uh, wet, um, but um, the least grebe is easily found here at Santa Ana. And of course, everybody comes to the Rio Grande for this bird, the green jay. Um, it is just remarkable. It's just uh, uh, everybody knows that's the first bird they want to see, and they have become uh, quite easily seen now. Um, I'll just put, put a few pictures up. Um, and um, Santa Ana and many other places, they're pretty easy to spot, especially at the feeding stations that all these places have. Some of the other, place, other birds that you'll see at these feeder stations and around the, uh, the parks are uh, uh, the default oriole down there is the Altamira oriole. They, they had just come in in April. Uh, but you can see a number of other orioles. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, again, the other woodpecker, especially you can get ladderback woodpecker. Um, black crested titmouse, again, I think it used to be conspecific with our tufted titmouse, where they split it a number of years ago. They have that um, nice little, uh, yeah, they have the white front the black crest, which is kind of opposite from ours. Um, Long-billed thrasher, uh, kind of a grayish version of our brown thrasher. And the bronze cowbird, very easily recognized by that red eye. Yeah. A couple other great, great specialties in Santa Ana. Um, you can usually found, find a nor northern beardless tyrannulet. Uh, that's not my picture, but that is my picture of a tropical perula. Uh, tropical perula looks similar to the um, northern perula, but it doesn't quite have that uh, that band in front. In fact, let me put up a picture I grabbed from the uh, internet. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit clearer throat, but a uh, very sharp looking bird. Um, and uh, <clears throat> had both these birds there uh, this April. And I think every time I visited Santa Ana. We'll go over to the west a bit, uh, to the Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park. This used to be an RV park, um, and it was fantastic. Um, the, the RVers would put a, a lot of the snowbirds would come down, set up feeders, and each of these feeders and all these spots would just, just attract uh, a lot of these birds. And um, I think in, um, let's see, I think in uh, 2000 and 
four, uh, they removed the um, RVers to make it a park, and it went downhill. <laughs> um, it wasn't as good as it used to be. Um, I will say it has picked up on uh, this last uh, visit. Uh, we did get to see uh, a lot more birds and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, you try to do something good, but uh, 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 again, uh, not quite as good as it used to be, but it's still worth a, work, worth a visit uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, um, the Vacasa uh, might hold any of the, uh, the two specialty kingfishers down there. We can cross the Delta Kingfisher, but you can get the green key, kingfisher. This guy, if you see it, um, it, it is green, but you'll probably see it as a miniature kingfisher that's all black flying away from you. Um, again, smaller than a Delta Kingfisher and frequently looks black in the uh, field. And then the ring kingfisher, which is larger than our Delta Kingfisher. Um, you do got to get lucky. Um, I've only had, uh, I've seen these down there, um, but not all the time. Uh, you do so got to <clears throat> kind of work for them. What I love about Benson Rio Grande, even the first time I went down there in 2002, they have these great, great setups for blinds. If you notice, you know, there's people standing, people sitting. Each of these slats can open up into a little shelf. So depending where the bird is, how tall you are, whether you're sitting, standing, you can make your own blind opening. And this is basically on, on three sides. I think it's a wonderful design and uh, you'll see this down there a bit. Uh, I would love to see blinds like this up here where you know, you're not stuck to that, you know, three or four holes that may or not, may not be in the best position to see or photograph a bird. Uh, really great design. And what birds can you see? Again, at these feeders, you can get uh, a number of the doves, um, Inca dove, um, uh, white winged dove were pretty common. And then the uh, Rio Grande specialty is really the white tip dove. The tail is just a bit tipped and white. Um, very, uh, fairly large, plump bird. Um, and even doves can, I think, a uh, pretty nice looking, especially when they're in fresh plumage. And of course, the specialty hummingbird down there is the buff-bellied hummingbird. A few uh, pictures of them. Um, very unlike a lot of other hummingbirds, they basically have color all over. Um, that uh, buff belly, greenish back. Um, and basically, you can find anywhere there are hummingbird feeders, you should be able to find a buff bellied hummingbird. Good reason to go to Rio Grande is the Hawk Watch. <clears throat> it is this nice, large platform, uh, but a long ramp up to above the tree level. And you're basically looking at, um, at Canada, at, <laughs> at Mexico. Um, and during April, there is a great um, spring Hawk Watch. Uh, here, we can actually, this is from a number of years ago, that, um, large polar bear is in Mexico. Uh, it's no longer there. Uh, it wasn't there last time when we were in April. But uh, you're actually looking into Mexico and up, and um, there are just a lot of species. Probably the three main uh, species coming through in April that you want to see are, of course, a broadwing hawk, Swainson's hawk, and Mississippi kites. But there are a lot of other hawks in the area and also uh, coming through. Um, um, the white-tailed kite, uh, gray hawks are becoming more and more common down there. Uh, you can get white-tailed kite, Harris's hawk, and uh, back in the bottom left-hand corner, a hook-billed kite. Um, I've seen this a couple of times. Um, that's one of the birds that people really want to see. And um, they're rare. Um, you, uh, years ago, 20 years ago, you had to wait for one to kind of wander over the Rio Grande uh, onto the U.S. side. Um, and you could look at that uh, silhouette picture, my best picture of that. You can still tell it's a hook-billed kite. Look how the wings attach to the body. They're actually pinched in. They actually go in a little bit before attaching to the body. Um, 
basically no other real hawk around here um, or down there really has that uh, <clears throat> weird uh, silhouette. Um, uh, they became a lot more regular um, uh, you know, 10 years ago, and give or take five years. Uh, they came and uh, they do eat snails. And um, uh, if you go to Rio Grande, uh, you'll see uh, Valley State Park, you know, you'll see these striped uh, about as snails. Um, and there was a good supply of them. And uh, basically, they were seeing hookbill kites nearly um, all the time, at least one or two, two pairs. Um, and they would eat these snails. Problem is, um, you know, they ate them all up, or they kind of died out a bit, and hookbill kites became uh, quite rare again. Um, this past uh, trip, we did not see any of them. But the good news is, is that the snails are definitely coming back. So if you, t if you go into the state park, um, uh, look at the trees, and you'll see these white snails on the trees. I also will say that there's two ways to do the park. Um, you can walk in and walk all the around. It's quite a big park, but they also have a tram that goes around. So it uh, saves a lot of steps. Um, and I would recommend it. It doesn't start till about 9.30 in the morning, but you can actually walk in and then hop, and on, hop on and hop off anytime you want. Good way to get around that uh, state park. Uh, not only birds down there, but um, um, you can get a number of lizards. Um, this Laredo striped whip tail. Um, um, I found out uh, this is its new name. Um, uh, basically, I, I uh, used to thought it was a, a Texas spotted whip tail, but uh, some believe that uh, to a result of a lot of hybridization between the Texas spotted whip tail and the six line race runner led to this Laredo striped white tail. Um, if you get lucky, you can see like a rose-bellied lizard or the Texas spiny lizard. And of course, one of the uh, <clears throat> mammals down there is the collet peccary, or also known as the javelina. Um, they've been a little bit harder to find lately, um, but they are around um, generally early, early in the morning is the best time to kind of find them. Okay, let's move on. Very nearby, you see that little map uh, National Butterfly Center, which is fairly new down there. Uh, it's only about a mile away from the, uh, the, the, the Benson, um, you yeah, know, now they're called World Birding Centers. Um, uh, this is a great place. It's the first time I visited it. Uh, again, uh, started by um, um, Jeff uh, Glassberg. Um, and, but the other thing, it is also good for birding. Now, as for butterflies, uh, April is not the best time. Um, later in the, in the year, uh, late fall, I mean, uh, late summer, fall, I believe is much better. But um, they have this great bird feeding area in the, uh, in the back corner. Uh, and what's nice about it, it is open, so there's no blinds or anything. You sit around this, these benches and stuff like that. They come in and slop on some cornmeal stuff and oranges and all the birds that I've mentioned before come flying in and they're only six, 10, 15 feet away from you. Uh, and it's just a show. Um, you can get uh, plain chucka, ch chuckalaka, uh, one of my favorite birds. Uh, they were displaying down there. I got some great videos of them. And the olive sparrow, um, probably more related to the uh, more towhee. Um, and these guys were just jumping around along with blue jay, uh, green jays and uh, uh, Altamira orioles, um, a lot of the other things. But the interesting thing uh, that we found out, uh, there was a weird mated pair down there. Um, one of an Audubon's oriole, which is a big specialty down there, was um, basically a male was um, hook up, hooked up with a... Uh, Altamira Oriole, and it's been there for two or three years now, both basically uh, there. Uh, we did not get to see the Audubon's Oriole this year. Uh, she did come into the feeders, but uh, he was nowhere to be found. But um, great specialty, uh, Audubon's Oriole. And I believe <coughs> in the Rio Grande Valley, if you go to all these places, it's possible to pick up six species of, or, or, of uh, Orioles. You can get hooded Orioles down there. 
But you do get butterflies down there. Uh, some are familiar to us, like the American snout. One you will see in April is the Empress Lelia. If I'm saying that right, I, I don't know. I just love that uh, butterfly. It's a very delicate brown uh, thing, but these are some of the ones that I've picked up here and there. Uh, I think Lantana Scrub Hair Streak is uh, pretty special down there. Yeah. Muddy Dagger Wing was really cool looking. And again, if you go there um, uh, later in the year, uh, it gets even better. So let's go to uh, Estero Lana, Mano Grand State Park. Uh, I will say that um, if you go to these Texas state parks, they are all well, well managed and put together great. Uh, they, uh, all the blinds and everything, uh, just fantastic parks. Um, um, I don't think I've ever seen uh, state parks as good as the ones at least down here in the Rio Grande part of Texas. Uh, again, uh, just got to go to the parking lot and in the visitor center, pick up a trail map and then have a couple of lakes. Uh, if you need to see an alligator, they have alligator lake, eh, have a couple of alligators. Um, they actually have an old RV section. I think they call it the, uh, I forgot what it's called, the uh, tropical area. Um, and you can see a lot of the birds that I already mentioned uh, as well as uh, another bird, usually found in the parking lot, the one on the left, clay-colored robin. It used to be uh, called clay-colored thrush. Or is it now? No, it's now called clay-colored thrush. I think I got the old name there. But these, again, used to be pretty rare down there. Uh, you had to search them out. But now they have expanded. Just about every place you'll visit probably has a pair of clay-colored thrushes now. Uh, again, very similar to our robin, but just basically uh, this brown, gray color. Um, and again, right on the parking lot. Uh, brown crested flycatcher is the default flycatcher down there. Uh, you can get some of the others as well. That, that's one of the more common ones down there. Just another pair of black-bellied whistling ducks. Um, these are tree ducks, and you will see them in trees or on light posts at your uh, hotel. Very weird looking when you go out to the, your car and you look up and there's a duck sitting on top of a lamppost above your car. Uh, again, they also have you know, great ponds and great observation areas. That structure is the, where the, nature, uh, the center is. This is uh, from the other side of it, overlooks the, the pond there. Um, as you can see, it just looks fantastic. One of the things you find in the ponds are actually shorebirds in April. Uh, here we see the, the uh, mainly um, long-billed dowagers. And you can see a few other small guys down there. Um, basically, um, large flocks of, of both long-billed dowagers and stilt sandpiper. And what's nice about the stilt sandpiper is they're in really nice breeding plumage, very easy to identify. Uh, you do get both yellow legs and other shorebirds down there. Um, but I was very, always surprised at how common stilt sandpiper or, or can be, uh, can be uh, found at, uh, at, this at, at this park. And you have your alum your waders. Um, again, roseate spoonbills, black neck stilts, American avocets. Uh, basically, any pond down there can actually have these. Um, and, um, oh, sorry. Uh, I will say before I move on to a, a last birding spot is, is that, uh, again, this state park is open till 10 p.m. So you can go in there and wait till dusk. And uh, in, in um, April, you'll hear both screech owl, great horned owl, um, common parake, and Chuck Will's widow, all hooting and singing and uh, just really fantastic. Uh, oh, also, also, we'll say that uh, also a good place to find cave swallows. Actually, just down the road from the entrance, uh, there's a, uh, a bridge in which they uh, breed under, and they come over to the park quite frequently. So cave swallows, another, another specialty you can see down there. But now, if you go all the way over to the coast, um, to South Padre Island, years ago, it, uh, this area, people used to go to a, it was a hotel that had a little garden in front with a water feature. 
and all the spring migrants, the eastern screen, spring migrants will find, you know, the, uh, this barrier island, and it was the only fresh water around. And so they would just pile in there and uh, an incredible trap, a uh, migrant trap. Um, they did develop it a little further south on there. Uh, the, uh, the Birding Nature Center has some great boardwalks, and in front they have gardens and some water features. And uh, here you'll, you'll find just about any possible uh, Eastern migrant that you can find. It varies from day to day and from wave after wave. So depending on when you go down there, you'll see others versus uh, uh, things. Um, just over the years, um, again, point blank looks at, you know, six feet away in a bush, totally oblivious to you, uh, pathonotary wobbler, Tennessee wobbler, uh, black-throated green, actually any of the wobblers that uh, migrate can be found. Uh, these are just some of my pictures. And then literally, you just, I mean, there's people all around and these birds are just feeding like crazy. You'll get uh, both indigo bunting um, and painted bunting here. Uh, and again, this is the best place to get um, Baltimore and Orchard Oriole as well. Then if you go head out towards the boardwalk, um, again, this is on the, uh, the bay side. Uh, you got a lot of your <clears throat> um, waiters. Um, again, white ibis are very common down there. More roseate spoons bills. And that duck on the right is a model duck. Um, I'll, I'll get a picture of him a little closer. But uh, I think one of the best places to see Sora, um, when it's low tide, uh, the tides are kind of weird down there. They're not kind of like 24 hours or 12 hour type tides. But when it's low tide, these Sora's can, you'll find five or six, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, just out in the sun, walking around. Um, uh, you can also get reddish egret there. Uh, this was seen last uh, this last April. And um, again, since you're on the Gulf Coast now, you can have a lot of the species that we're a bit more familiar with. Uh, brown pelicans uh, can get oil and Caspian terns, as well as uh, sandwich terns if uh, you get a little lucky. And then one bird that I was very happy to see, a bird that uh, used to have to go a little further south um, right on the, uh, the, the, uh, border with Mexico. Um, if, um, I give a quick people to take a look at what they think this is. This is a yellow wobbler. Um, basically it is a mangrove yellow wobbler. It is uh, still considered a yellow wobbler, but they have these great rufous heads. Uh, the song is slightly different. Um, kind of yellow wobbler type song um, but you used to have to go to this, like Sable Palm Grove uh, Center closer to Brownsville to kind of get these birds but they seem to be expanding up a little bit further north uh, very happy to see this uh, very cool looking uh, type of yellow wobbler uh, just some odds and ends um, again anytime you go down there there are specialties rarities that come across the border um, you do get groove built annies starting to come in um, April. You might uh, that early. You might have to seek them out where the first ones show up. Um, I've had uh, both. That's a female, very bad picture of a female crimson collared grosbeak. But uh, one trip in two different places, we had a male and a female at two different places. Uh, you also have green parakeets and um, uh, red crowned parrots. Um, they used to be seen mainly uh, in McAllen in the um, um, you know, suburbs, um, you go to people's houses that actually see these green parakeets are kind of in somebody's eve kind of hanging out. <laughs> uh, but they've expanded a little bit now. Um, uh, we had, uh, well, we only heard red crown parrots in, um, in uh, Sterile Lande Grande uh, State Park. Um, and just to finish off, always look up. Basically, in April, these, uh, there's a lot of migration going on. And um, it's amazing what sites you'll see just by looking up. You can get huge flocks of white pelicans flying by. Uh, this year, we came across a huge kettle 
of anhingas, uh, just swirling uh, about in the morning, or you actually get a huge kettle of gulls. Take a look at these gulls. Uh, yeah, they have black heads, but they're not laughing gulls. These are actually Franklin gulls. Uh, we had a, a kettle of like 200 come slowly swirling over us. So uh, I think that's it. So I just want to thanks for listening uh, to my little uh, thing. Um, if you like it, uh, you can read about our, my uh, wife, uh, Kelly, and or myself's uh, trips on, on our website. And we also have some YouTube videos. Just, uh, just Google my name. You should be able to find it. So thanks.